Hi, this is Charlie Montatiello with another video on Native American flute making. This video is a follow-up to our uh, flute making kit that we have now available on our website at a pretty reasonable rate, I might say. Uh, but what we've done is we've made our little flute here, put it together, sanded it, it has our block, if you remember from our last video, um, the block is down, it actually plays. But it sounds a little off. And uh, I want to show you, for those of you who haven't maybe seen our other tuning videos, uh, once again, so that it's associated with exactly what you've got, this same flute, I want to make sure I show you how to tune it. And uh, it's actually a lot easier to do than you think. Um, flute makers, of course, make a big deal out of it. I personally don't like to tune flutes to European scales, which is what we're about to do. But for those of you who don't maybe have a good ear for pentatonic scales like I do, um, I want to show you how to tune it to a European scale. I can tune it to a scale that is not in the 440 or even 432 hertz tuning mechanism, and it will be in tune with itself, but it sounds beautiful. In my opinion, I like them that way. I like them a little sharper than, than uh, the way that they're tuned, whereas 432 is a little bit flatter, but I like them sharper myself, um, and I make some really beautifully tuned, traditionally tuned flutes. But we're going to do it European way today. For any of those of you who might want to learn how to tune your flute to play with other instruments, or if you just want to know how to tune it, and once again, don't have a good tuner. So let's take a look at my old trusty cell phone tuner here. This program, as I mentioned to you before, you can probably see there's a lot of versions of it on the app stores and on iTunes if you use a. Uh, Apple, this is an Android, just a little cheap disposable Android cell phone. I may have paid, I don't know, 50 bucks for back in the day when we used it. I don't use it for that anymore. The only thing I use it for is tuning flutes. It stays out here in the shop and the dust and everything is a mess. But, but anyway, so the, the uh, program here works really well. And let me tilt this up with a flute blank for you so that you can see it while we're tuning this guy. Um, it's going to be tuned to the key of A, 440. And a lot of you may not have the tools that we have here at your home. You may not use burning rods, you may not have the flute burning tools or any of that mess. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a piece of sandpaper that comes in your kit. This is your little piece of sandpaper here. I've cut it off of your main piece. And uh, this is the coarse grit sandpaper. Coarse means that it's rougher than the other one. And just cut it small enough that I can roll it up into kind of a little tube shape. Don't even have to roll the rest of it into the shape. And we're going to use it to file out these holes some um, to make them a little bit larger. It's always best to start tuning from your bottom, but I just thought I'd show you um, what this guy does. You can go in and, and sand it this way until it's in tune. And because this is going to be in the key of A, let's cover up all the holes first and see what the bottom is. See a little dude lights up when it's within about five cents. In uh, layman terms, it's really close. <laughs> so that uh, bottom note's actually pretty close already. Your bottom note is probably going to be a little bit flat because behind the scenes I cut a little bit of this off already. Um, but uh, the bottom of the flute, you know, you'll just need to sand it down, cut it. Uh, you can score it if you're really careful with a knife like I, I've showed you in the past. Um, you can score it by just going around in circles like this and it'll snap off. But you have to be very careful. Please take your time. I want you to mess up your first flute. I'd like you to have a great, fantastic experience with this, so take your time, whatever you do. If you have a saw, saw works great. Uh, the finer tooth saws work much better. You can buy a package of saw blades if you're really kind of on a budget. Saw blades cost about a buck for a hacksaw blade, and you don't even have to have a hacksaw to use it. So uh, cut the bottom off a little bit, check it with the tuner. If it looks like it's right, leave it. You're good. Bottom note goes first. After tuning the bottom note, the next note you want to tune is this hole right here. So watch what happens when I uncover the first hole. It's a really flat, that's what this side is, is flat, C. So my C is a little flat, which is good, because it's hard to fix it when it's sharp. <laughs> um, you want to go in here and file this with your sandpaper. One method of doing it, if you have drill bits at home, Use drill bits. I recommend using them by hand if this is your first flute. And yes, you can use drill bits by hand. But you want to file that hole just a little bit bigger. This first one I'm going to do with the sandpaper because it's what you guys have on hand. 
But to speed up this video, I'm going to use one of my burning tools for the rest of the video. Just to make it quicker. We've filed it down. It's a little larger. I don't know if you can see in the video too much, but it's larger, this one is, than this one. Let's see what it sounds like. Boy, that's really close. It's not lighting up yet, but it's awful close. I can hear the difference myself, so... Just want to keep on keeping on here. Be very careful. Keep in mind, this is your first flute. This is going to be your baby. It's going to go up on the shelf. You may not play it again after you make your tenth one. You might think, man, that one, first one is not really that great. <laughs> but you're never going to get rid of it. So, let's see if that did it. The hole's a lot bigger now. So close. So close. Let's keep going here. We're just enlarging. That's a word, right? Okay, Jesse says that's a word. So, enlarging the hole. I think I checked enlarging on spell check, and there's no spelling for it. Boy, is that close. I'm going to do this one more time. Enlarging this hole is letting more of the vibrations out of the flute, letting more of them escape. Notice I said escape and not escape. Any of you have been saying escape, shame on you. Anyway, it lets more of the vibrations that are coming from the flute and the air vibrating through the flute, it's letting more of those, sounds, those sound vibrations out. And letting the vibrations out makes a higher note. That's all you need to know. So the bigger the hole, usually the higher the note. If you notice, I blow fast and it even gets higher. But that one's pretty close. I'm Honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with that note. I am going to take this opportunity to refold my paper and do it a little differently, which I know from my own experience will let us sand a little bit quicker. So just kind of round and round and round. Remember I told you the name of the game is Improvise. Indian people and most culturally significant people in the world, which is like everybody before 1950, um, <laughs> before we started going downhill. That's my little joke there. Indian people used to improvise very well. Suckers in tune. So the next one we're going to tune, like I said, I'm going to use a burning tool because it's so much quicker, but watch. Um, so the first note is A. All holes covered. Next hole is C. Got a little bit of warbling here. I think I have a piece of debris under my block. There it is. That D is really flat, if y'all see that. And I'm going to let you watch what I'm going to do here with my burning tool. Check this out. This goes straight through here. Don't burn too much, and don't sand too much. Always go back and check every time you do this. Because you've burned too much out, it's very difficult to put more back in. Amazingly closer. I'm going to show you guys, let's see. Next, I'm just going to burn this hole a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a little bit bigger. I'm going to put my tool back on the burning rod. And let's see. It even sounds clearer. Clearer is a word too, right? Is it more clear? Clearer? I think both words are okay. Somebody in the UK let me know. Y'all speak the Queen's English and, you know. Us colonists over here. Listen to me. Pretend I'm one of y'all. <laughs> Oh gosh. We colonists. <sighs> no. We're not all colonists. Some of us were from here. Pretty close. Let's check the next one. So it goes A, C. This is supposed to be. I'm so sorry. A is a bottom. 
C is the next, D is the next, and then this guy right here is supposed to be uh, an E. If you notice, it is a D sharp, which is basically an E flat. So we need to burn that one out too. Grab my rod. You guys don't mind me doing this left handed. Like I say, don't burn it out too much. I'm going a little quick here because I want to make you guys a short video that is quick and easy. But you see the holes are about the same size now, which is nice. Hey, look at it. It's a flat E now. Not E flat, but a flat E. Turn my fire up just a little bit. Usually in the shop we have our burning rods going like crazy. We have two or three of them set up sometime and we're burning this or burning that. And uh, either Jesse and I or River and I, my oldest boy, sometimes when he's in here helping us, we'll uh, be using a burning tool for something or another and the other person needs a different one or we share them or whatever. Usually have a lot of them going like crazy. So we're going to burn this hole out just a little more. If you notice, I'm keeping my thumb. It's kind of a habit. I keep it on the hole that I haven't burned yet so that I don't get confused. After a couple of hundred thousand flutes, you do get a little confused sometimes. Oh, what hole you burnt last? Wait a minute, was that the hole I burnt yesterday or what? Let's see. Now if you notice, I'll blow fast. I think y'all can see this tuner pretty good on the video. I'm going to blow fast and watch the note go sharp. Little playing t uh, technique and hint is that a lot of you who use different amounts of air when you play the flute, some of you use a small amount of air, some of them a large amount of air. Myself, I try to keep it in the medium, especially when I'm tuning a flute, um, because I want to make sure I give you something that's you know generally acceptable. Um, but if you're using too much air when you're blowing, your notes will tend to go sharp. If you're using too little air when you're blowing, when you're playing your flute, they will tend to go flat. So if you're wondering why sometimes your notes aren't exactly in the same key as another person who has the exact same key flute, that may be the reason. And I always go back over it too while I'm waiting on that rod to heat up. And I notice that my D is still a little off. I must have missed it. So, I'm going to take my rod. Go back one more time. The thing about tuning your flute, you don't want these holes to be all ugly and boogered up, as one of my old friends used to say. You want to uh, make them nice and round as possible, but I also want to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. I've been saying you guys a lot. I have a friend from New York that I've been talking to. <laughs> but uh, So, burn the hole out a little bit more. Really, the, the hole needs to come this way towards my body here, towards the mouthpiece of the flute. And uh, the reason being, of course, the further this way the hole or the opening is, the more of the sound uh, vibrations that it lets out, the higher pitch the note. So you get the idea. Um, but this hole and this hole and subsequently this hole also control the sound of this hole. So if one of these guys were a little too big or too small and then you tune this one, and then you go back and retune that one, this note's going to be off. So you want to keep that in mind. Let's see what it sounds like. That next one is much closer now. We're going to go ahead and burn this next hole a little larger. Let's see. Let's see if I can round it off some. see what that guy sounds like. Well, the D looks good. And the E is so close. Let's do that one more time. And then I'll show you another trick in case you get stuck, especially if you're using a burning tool. You think, gosh, what am I going to do? The hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I'm not talking about inlays. We'll talk about them in a future video again. And we'll address that specifically. But for this guy, 
what I'm going to show you is take your sandpaper again. If you've been using a burning tool, all this tissue around the wood fiber in there is all scarred up and burned. And if you use the sandpaper, it will actually remove that scarred up and burned tissue. Whereas if you're using the burning tool, the burning tool just causes more carbonation in, uh, or rather, is it carbonization? Maybe that's it. Carbonizing? I think that's right. Uh, carbonation is what you drink. <laughs> but uh, it just keeps carbonizing the wood, and carbonizing the wood isn't making the hole any larger. So let's see if that did the trick. Incredibly close. I'm just going to use the sandpaper in this hole a little more. Our next video for the Western Cedar flute kit is going to be how to decorate it if that's something you're interested in. Myself, I like playing flutes a lot. Really close. Last time on this hole with the burning tool, just real lightly. The burning tool is glowing, huh? There we go. Real lightly, because like I said, we just took all the carbonized wood out. And since we removed the carbonized wood, we have real good wood pulp in there and it burns real quick. Hey, how about that? So next note, so we've got A, C, D, E, and then G is the next note. Let's see if it's a G. It's an F sharp or G flat. Watch what happens when I blow really fast. I can blow it in tune, but you don't want to have to do that. Playing the flute for somebody. Plus it doesn't sound good. So let's go ahead and very gently and delicately I'm going to burn this hole just a wee bit. I know, that's the Queen's English here. Just a wee bit. Just kidding. <laughs> All my buddies out there. Just a really flat G. Let's burn it out a wee bit more. Is that close? Let's go ahead and use the sandpaper on it. I bet this has done the trick here. I can feel that it's taken out a lot of that carbonized wood. So close. One last time with the burning tool and we'll be there. Happy little flutes. There we go. Let's see what it sounds like. It's so close. Gosh, I'll tell you what. Sometimes with tuning especially, if you really want to tune this thing superbly and get it exactly orchestrally tuned, you've got to go back a bunch of times. Now you all at home are the ones of you that have been on our website while we're watching this video are thinking, yeah, I know why it charges more for tuning flutes to European scales. See. Oh, that's great. Next one. And I'm blowing a little too fast on that one, but I can tell that it's not too far out of tune. Let's see what this does. It should be really close. Gosh, it's awful close. More sandpaper. Just really quick with the sandpaper. Let's see. One more time with the burning tool. You at home, if you're just using a sandpaper technique, you can do this. It takes about 45 minutes, I have done it, to tune a flute with a piece of sandpaper instead of a burning tool. But you can do it. And let me tell you one major benefit of doing it that way. Boy, that sucker's in tune now. One major benefit of doing it that way is that you make less mistakes. It takes you longer, you do a much finer job, and you're less likely to mess it up. So let's look at the tuner real quick, and then I'll play it for you. It 
so close to in tune. So I'm going to play it for you real quick here before we uh, knock off for the video and uh, let you see what the little guy sounds like. Good little flute. Uh, so our next video is going to be more about you know making it look nice. I hope you guys have enjoyed our video. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email or message sometime through our website. It's the best way. You can send us a message here on YouTube. We do get them pretty regularly now that uh, Google Plus and whatever it is that we're doing with YouTube these days has gotten kind of second nature. But, uh, but in either case, like I said, please check us out on our website. It's bluebearflutes.com. And you can also go to our Facebook page and send us a message there. Either Jesse or I check that pretty regularly, but not as regularly as we do our email. They usually chime in here in the shop when we're working. So, uh, once again, Charlie Montatuello signing out. Blue Bear Flutes and Blue Bear Arts. BlueBearFlutes.com. Check us out and uh, enjoy your video.